Hello guys and girls, how's it going? Uh, Carl Screezilla here and I hope you're all well. And, uh, well, welcome to something a little bit different today. Today we are looking at a material known as Pycrete. Yes, this stuff here. Now we have two different things. We have a block of ice, just here, and a block of Pycrete, just here. Now, these two things are quite interesting got to get my stuff, I'll go around this way. So, we are out here in a very hot Australian sun, mainly to demonstrate the advantages of piecrete. Now, first things first, just to prove it's very hot, uh, let's see if that shows up, 33 degrees Celsius currently. Which is quite warm, if you've never been out in 33 degrees Celsius, especially in direct sunlight. So, Pycrete. This was invented after a rather interesting British madman, I should really have worn my sunglasses for this, uh, decided that building an aircraft carrier out of ice was a good idea. The aircraft carrier was going to be built out of ice for the Atlantic Ocean. And it was going to sit there and basically be a floating island. However, ice has a pretty nasty tendency of melting. And uh, icebergs are not the most stable things in the world. Also, you need to get an iceberg big enough to actually make this work. And that's not an easy thing to do. I am moving because the sun is really bright. <laughs> um, so anyway, Jeffrey Pike and uh, was it Mount Batten? Oh, I'm trying to think now. My memory is my, I'm using this off memory today. Uh, they basically came across the idea of, of doing this. Now, the idea was kind of thrown out because icebergs were a terrible solution. However, it did lead to them doing a bit of an experiment, and that was experimenting to try and create an option that would work. Now they did end up making a ship in Canada that was solid ice. This ship sat in Canada for about two years and it proved that the theory would work. Now the main reason for having a ship made of ice, good god there's a billion ants everywhere now, uh, was to effectively have something in the middle of the Atlantic so the Allies could fend off U-boat attacks by the Germans. Because they couldn't really have, well, they couldn't have any medium to heavy bombers stationed in the middle of the Atlantic, you couldn't even have seaplanes stationed there, it was a real tricky thing to do. Now you did have escort carriers, but they had a tendency to be sunk by German U-boats because they were very juicy targets. So the decision was made to try and make a floating island. The floating island idea needed something to work for it. And this is where Pie Creek came into, an, into the world. Um, a Austrian inventor uh, by the name of Perez uh, basically came together with one of his colleagues to create a sort of polymer, um, an alloy, so to say, from ice. And it was basically ice, uh, wool, and wood pulp. And what they found was this was much harder and much more resistant to the heat and also, well, everything. It turned out this stuff was almost as hard as concrete. Now, to give us an idea of that, uh, let us have a little bit of a demonstration. So right now, this ice has been sat out here for about, about 10 minutes. Um, step in front of the camera. And the actual liquid ice is melting quite quickly. Piecrete, it is melting. Um, there's definitely melting happening, uh, as you can see. Uh, that's mainly the water level on the top because a lot of the piecrete actually sank to the bottom when I was making it. But 
we're going to do a little test of strength right now. So, we have a hammer. Now, in the original test of strength, what they did was they got a rifle for this. Um, they shot the block of ice with a rifle, and it did that. They shot a block of pikerite with a rifle, and it did that. Um, that was quite a few hefty swings there. Um, as you can see, like just even a tap, the ice comes off. The pie creep, not so much. I didn't actually crack it, so that is something. I have cracked it, but a cool thing you won't be able to see on camera is actually the um, mist coming off of it because it is so cold in the middle still. But this gives you an idea of just how strong pie creep is. We can also see with this ice now, it is melting super quick. Um, even in my hands right now, this melt, this ice is almost gone. Uh, you know, it just pretty much is going instantly. I'll move a couple of blocks around just so you can see how quick they're melting in comparison. Uh, but yeah, it's super quick to melt. Now, the other thing about pikerite was uh, to sort of prove that it would work, they, they went to the uh, prime minister's residence and he was taking a bath at the time yes winnie was in the bath mr churchill was taking a bath they walked in there and dropped it in the bathtub the pikerite floated another advantage of pikerite is it actually floats i really should have bought a bowl out to show that but unfortunately i didn't think that far ahead i just thought about fire so No, nope, that fire is on. Just can't see it because it's too bright at the moment. Okay, fire on ice. It melts it rather quickly. On Pie Creek, not nearly as much. Again, because of the polymer solution, the pikerite is incredibly solid. It gives it that opportunity to, to basically not melt and be incredibly sturdy still. Even after blasting it with fire, still very strong. Ice, not so much. Now, another moment of proving this was done in the I'm going to put some ice on my hand because I may have burnt myself. Um, another moment of proving this was done in the actual general's office where uh, I said, I'm pretty sure it was Mountbatten. I'm probably going to be wrong, though, um, because I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Anyway, he went into the officers meeting and to prove that Pie Creek would work, uh, he put a block of it down and he pulled out his Webley service revolver. Block of ice there, block of Pie Creek there. He shot the block of ice with his pistol and obviously smash. He blocked, shot the block of pie creep with his crystal. Not quite as extreme as that, but basically it didn't shatter as much. And it also caused the bullet to ricochet. It ricocheted into a general, an American general's trouser leg, leaving a rather nasty hole in it. Now, the most unbelievable thing about pie creep is it was going to be used for Project ha Habuka, which was a verse in the Bible, uh, basically saying, thou shall not believe what I have done. I've created a marvel and yada, yada, yada. I've created the greatest thing you'll ever see. And this was in response to the U-boats, basically saying that the U-boat captains would never believe what they had seen and would just be, well, that's absolutely mental. There's no way the British built a ship out of ice. Now, it wasn't going to be solid ice. I'll bring a bit of pie creep a bit closer so you can see it a little bit better in the camera. Um, it wasn't going to be solid ice. It was going to have metal around it. It was actually going to have the same amount of metal needed to build a single escort carrier. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, when it was starting to get sort of looked into, the war was uh, getting to a point where they didn't really need it anymore, unfortunately, because the Azores were now open 
and an island was available in the middle of the Atlantic. Meaning that they did no longer need this marvellous creation of this strange block of wood pulp and ice to have a serviceable, well, fighting platform in the middle of the Atlantic. The project was abandoned. Now, if it had gone ahead, the outside would have been made of steel. Would have also had steel on the uh, internal parts. The Pie Creek would have performed basically the surrounding housing of the ship. The Pie Creek would have also allowed the ship to be repaired at sea because it would have had cooling systems on it. It would have been constantly cooling down the ship. It was going to have like a concrete structure of basically uh, pipes going through the Pie Creek, allowing cooling to be sent through there. You would only need a very small amount of horsepower to do it. The ship built in Canada, for instance, only needed a single horsepower engine to keep it cool, which is kind of a neat thing. The actual ship was going to be ginormous. Um, it was going to effectively hold around about 150 to 200 planes, which 10 of which would have been Lancaster bombers. Yes, Lancasters on an aircraft carrier. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? So it never ended up getting built. And unfortunately, we missed out on a great invention. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the little tale of Pie Crete. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little bit of video. Uh, something a bit different today. Uh, as you can see, the pie creek is still pretty much intact. The ice blocks very much melting as we stand here. My housemates are going to be wondering why there's so much wood chips outside and wondering what was going on. Um, but I thought I'd just go through the little bit of history on this one. There's much more to be learned about the ship itself. And what I'd recommend for that one is actually looking up uh, Drakenfell's video on it because it is really interesting that one i just wanted to have a little bit of a talk about pie Cree, really because it is one of those really random interesting little inventions done by the british during the war uh, where they effectively invented something that was absolutely crazy and was going to make a huge difference to the world uh, but it didn't end up happening a little bit like a pigeon guided bomb or a uh, Oh, we have many things to talk about in that respect. Uh, but yeah, Pie Creek was one of those weird little inventions that never ended up happening. But if it did, it would have been fairly interesting. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will be back soon with a little bit more weird history, military history, things like that. Until then, I'm going to wish you all the best in this very bright sun. Try not to burn my retinas out and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.